Hey everyone, welcome back and let's write some more neat code today. So today let's solve the problem, minimum number of K consecutive bit flips. It's a hard, but I'm about to make it look relatively easy, at least for a hard problem, though I don't necessarily expect you to come up with all of this by yourself. So the idea is we're given an array, which is gonna be a binary array. It's gonna be made up of zeros and ones. So consider this example where this is the input array that we're given and we're given a second parameter, which is k equals three. So the idea is we want this entire array to just be all ones, but the only operation we're allowed to do is we can perform a swap, like we can flip k consecutive values. So like we can pick a window of size k and then flip it. In this example, we'd probably wanna do that with the first window here. So let's turn all of these into ones. Next, we see that all of these have been ones. This is a one here. The next zero is gonna be over here. Now you tell me, like obviously there are multiple ways to flip this, right? Like we could flip it like this, or we could flip it like this for some reason. I don't know why you'd wanna do that. Like we already have these set as ones. So probably the best way to do this is like kind of be greedy we know that this zero has to be flipped. And so let's put it at the beginning of the window because everything before it is a one. So as we go through this problem, we're kind of going to assume that like wherever our pointer happens to be, we're going to assume everything before that is good. We don't want to touch that. We don't want to ruin it. So let's stick to this idea. So here, let's flip this. This is going to be a one. These are now going to be zeros. And it turns out that it worked out for us in this case. These two are uh, zeros is a zero. We can pick this window. We can flip it. And I think that took us three flips. What we would return in this case is going to be three. Basically, what is the minimum number of flips that we have to perform to make the array all ones? What if the example was slightly different? What if we actually didn't have this last element here? Remember that these were still zeros. There's nothing for us really to do. Like with this array, we can't do anything. We can flip these three. I guess that'll fix this one. We could flip these three. That'll fix these two. But then somebody's going to be ruined. Like one is going to turn into a zero somewhere. And we can't only flip a single bit. We have to flip K bits. With this example, we do not have a solution. That's why I'm front loading all of the ones. I want all the ones to be at the beginning because if we do have a few zeros left, there should be exactly K of them. And if not, then we don't have a solution. It's better to have it like this than to have like two zeros in the middle of the array and then ones everywhere else. In that example, we would return negative one. That's what we're told to do. So how do we go about solving this problem? Like I've drawn pretty much everything out for this example, but how would we keep track of all of those things algorithmically? Like what kind of data structures do we need? Well, this is the idea. If we like are at this position, we see it's a zero. Okay, let's do a flip, flip all K of these. We could update the array itself to do that. Like there's nothing wrong with doing that. Let's turn all of these into ones and we're good. Now we move the pointer over here. Everything is kept in track with this array. In the worst case, we'll end up iterating over the entire array. We might have to do a flip maybe in every single position. I don't know what the example would look like. Maybe something like alternating would probably lead us to an example like that, where we would have to like flip these K to turn this into a one, and then this would be a zero, then flip these, et cetera, et cetera. So something like that, maybe. But the point is that if we have to do that, we have to do n flips. A flip is going to take us k because we literally have to change each value. Then the overall time complexity is going to be O of n times k. Now we can do better than that. Not that this is a bad solution, but we definitely can do better. And that's what I'm going to show you. We actually don't need to perform every single flip. Is there some kind of way that we could keep track that these K elements have been flipped? I mean, our pointer is going to be over here. This is where we performed the flip from like the next K elements from here. And we know that once we flip this guy, we're going to move our pointer here and we're never going to worry about anything that came before anyway. But we should remember that we did perform a flip at index zero because that tells us that everything from index zero up until zero plus K minus one, that would be this index over here. Like if we do plus K, we're going to go one out. But if we do plus K minus one, we're going to stop here. And we want to know that these two have already been flipped. Like we need some kind of information. 
we could store that in a single variable, right? Like just say, okay, the last flip happened at index zero. But what if we do another flip at index one? And let's say K is really, really big. It could be 10. Like it could include all of these. Then we would want to know that this value was flipped once and then it was flipped again. So it went from one to zero to back to one. The hard part about this is keeping track of multiple flips and how they influence the remaining portion of the array. That's the hard part. So how do we keep track of multiple flips that have occurred? Well, just like yesterday's problem, we can actually use a queue to do that. Because as we perform flips, we're going to say, okay, I'm here. I'm going to do a flip at index zero. Then I'm going to do a flip at index one. Then maybe I'm going to do a flip at index three. Well, at some point, if our window is K, like now my pointer is over here. Well, the only flips that should influence this guy are flips that happened from here to here, like in this range. So I'd want to remove this. I'd want to pop it and I want to pop it. So we're going to be adding indexes that have been flipped and then popping them as we shrink the window. Like as we shift our pointer, we don't want anything that's further than this, like that K distance. And that's pretty much the solution to solve this problem. I'll kind of just dry run through it really quickly. This is our queue down here. It's going to keep track of the indexes that have been flipped. So here we see it's a zero. So go ahead and flip these three. So I'm just going to turn them all into ones. And our flip was performed here at index zero. So I'm going to add that there. I'm going to go to the next element. It's already a one. How would we know that? I mean, I didn't literally change the input array. How would we know that there's a one over here? Well, I'm going to take the length of the queue because we're going to assume that everything in the queue, every flip that happened, that's present in the queue does affect the current position. And so if there was one flip performed and the value here happens to be a zero, what we're going to do, the calculation I'm going to do is going to be zero plus one. And then I'm going to mod that by two. And here we're going to get a one. The reason I'm doing the mod is because if a value starts at zero and you mod it by two, well, it's going to stay zero. If you have a one, and you mod that by two, it's going to stay as one. But if you start introducing some flips, so let's say I performed five flips, zero plus five is five. I mod that by two, I get one. That means if I flip zero five times, I'm going to get one. That makes sense because an odd number of flips should change zero into a one. And if you do the same thing for a one, you'll get pretty much the same result. So if I took one modded by two, and then let's say I added five flips to it, then this is gonna be six. Six modded by two is gonna be zero. And that makes sense. If you take one, flip it five times, the result is gonna be zero. So that's the calculation I'm gonna do. So when we look at this pointer, at this position, it's a zero plus the length of this, that's one mod that by two, it's a one as a result. So therefore we know that the true value here is actually a one. And we're going to move to the next position, do the exact same thing. The true value is a one. Now it's going to get interesting. We haven't done any more flips in this area. So now we're here, we're at index three, but our window should stop here. So this is the part where we pop from the queue. We're going to pop this guy because it's too far away. And now we're here. It's a one. So we're good. We just shift our pointer to the next position now here. Our queue is empty, nothing to do there, but this is a zero now. So we're gonna add the index, I think it's four. We're gonna add that to the queue. We're gonna flip this, even though we're not technically changing the array, I'm just gonna still redraw it. This is gonna be a one, a zero, and a zero. Okay, now we move to the next position. Now this is a zero and we'll know that because one plus the length of the queue, that's two, mod that by two, we get zero. So the true value here is a zero. And so we perform another flip. This is index five, I believe. So I'm gonna add five to the queue. And so now the values in all of these positions are just gonna be one, one, one. And then I'm gonna go here, it's a one, here it's a one, and then we're done. So we ended up doing three flips, as you can see, so our result would be three in this case. So now let's code it up. These were some of the notes that I took uh, when I was coding it up myself. It may or may not be helpful for you, but just wanted to leave that there just in case. But now let's restart. So we are gonna have that queue I talked about. I'm gonna use a deck in Python. We're gonna have the total number of flips. I'm gonna call that result. That's what we're gonna end up returning. And then I'm gonna go through every position in the input. 
And remember, ultimately what we want to do is something like this. We want to take the current element number at index i. We want to add to it the length of the queue because that tells us how many flips, how many operations have been made that are relevant to this position. And then we want to mod that by two. And if it's a zero, then we want to perform a flip here. Now, before I do that, actually, I guess I might as well, because this is pretty simple. So first we want to check if we have enough elements remaining, because that's the case where we're going to return negative one. If I plus K is greater than the length of nums, that means we don't have K elements remaining starting from index I. Therefore, at this point, we'll return negative one. We can't really perform a flip. We have to return negative one. Otherwise, we're going to try to do the flip. Now, there's not a lot involved in doing that. One, we probably want to update the result if we're doing a flip. Let's increment that by one. One, two, let's add the flip to the queue. So we'll say that we did a flip at this index, append index i, and that's it. The difficult part is the part up here. Well, it's not really difficult, but it gets into why we're using a queue in the first place. Remember, we want all flips that are in the queue to be relevant to the current window. So we're going to say this while the queue is non empty and while our index currently is greater than the last valid index for the flip in the queue. And we're going to look at the first flip in the queue. We're going to go from left to right. So we're going to take the flip at index zero, and this will tell us the index that the flip happened at. And to that, we're going to add K minus one. If that doesn't make sense, just think of a window like this. Zero, one, two, three. Let's say K is equal to three. And let's say we did a flip at index zero. The last valid index that that flip would affect is going to be index two, right? So this window. And if you do the calculation um, at the top right, zero plus three minus one is going to be two. So that's the idea behind this equation. So if I is greater than the last valid index, that means that that flip does not affect the current index, in which case we want to pop that flip. So Q pop left. And that's literally it. This is the entire solution. In my opinion, the way I've coded it up is definitely more simple than the editorial, but you can decide that for yourself. On the left, you can see that this solution does work. It's pretty efficient, but there's actually one little optimization that we can make to it. So going back to the drawing board, I want to show you a solution that doesn't actually save time but does reduce the space. The solution I just coded up in front of you was a linear time solution but also linear space. Well, I guess it actually wasn't linear space. I think the max size of the queue would be k because it's never going to be larger than like the window. So I think this was the time and space complexity, which I think is perfectly fine, but you can reduce the space complexity, which I do want to show you. Now the caveat is that we can only get the constant space solution if we modify the input array, sometimes that's not allowed. So check with your interviewer before you attempt to do something like that. But the idea is very, very similar to the Q solution. Like there's only going to be a few lines of code that we change here. We did a flip instead of adding that to a separate data structure. We're actually going to change this value to a two. That's going to tell us that there was a flip that happened here. And we're allowed to do that because once we flip, like then we're going to move to the next index. We're never going to consider that again because we're going to assume it's going to be a one and it's going to stay a one. So it's fine for us to change this to a two, but that alone is not enough. We're going to have a variable that's going to tell us how many flips we've made that are relevant to the current window. So instead of having a queue, which we just took the length of the queue to tell us how many flips, we're actually just going to have a dedicated variable for exactly that purpose. So here we did a flip. Now, technically, these are going to be one, one. And this variable here flips is going to be set to one. We've done one flip that's relevant to the current window. Next, we move the pointer here. Flip is going to stay one and this is one. So we're good. Next pointer is here. This is one. So we're good. Now the pointer is going to be here. We know that the flip that we made was over here. But how do we know that? Like we didn't store that information anywhere. Well, the way we're going to do this is actually very, very simple. We always know that the size of the window is always going to be K. So if there was an element that we performed a flip at that was out of bounds, it's always going to be at this index minus K from here. Minus K is going to bring us all the way over here. So all we do is check 
Is the value over here a two? If it is, that means that that flip was a part of our window over here. But now that we've shifted over here, that flip is no longer a part of this window. So we would decrement the count of flips down to zero now. And now that we're here, we have zero flips. So what value is this? One plus zero. Well, that's still one. So it's a one. So no need to flip this guy. Next, we're going to be here. It's a zero and we have zero flips. So we know for sure that this actually is a zero. So let's do a flip. Let's change this into a two, not a one. And we'll assume that these will look like zeros, but we're not actually changing these. And so now we would increment the number of flips to be one again. Now our pointer is over here. We see a zero again because the original value is a one and we performed one flip. So this is definitely a zero. So let's perform another flip. Let's turn this into a two. Uh, this will look like a one and this will look like a one. And now the number of flips we'll have is going to be two. And then we're going to look at this value. The original value was a one with two flips. It'll stay as a one. And then we'll be over here. And at that point, we'll see that over here there was a flip, but it's now outside of the window. So we'll decrement the number of flips down to one. That doesn't really change anything because this is still going to be a one and we're done. So we had three flips and we didn't need any extra memory to do that. So it's very similar to the last solution, just kind of storing some information within the array. Like I said, we're not going to need a lot of code modifications to this. So I'm going to name this pretty descriptively. I'm going to call it current window flips just because there's not a lot to code for this, to be honest. Remember how we were using the length of the queue? Well, now we're going to use this variable. So I'm just going to copy it and substitute it over here. The rest of this code looks correct, except the fact that we are appending to the queue. Instead of doing that, let's go ahead and increment this variable and also let's change the number itself at index i to be a two that's going to be important for this part up here because we don't have the queue anymore we're going to do something different we're going to say if i minus k first of all let's just make sure that that's in range and then we're going to check if the number at i minus k is equal to two that element is now outside of the window so we have to then decrement current window flips and that's i think all the changes that we needed so it's pretty similar to the previous solution and as you can see it works and it's very efficient if you found this helpful check out neatcode.io i'll be launching a python for coding interviews course pretty soon it'll have a lot of interactive lessons thanks for watching and i'll see you soon